In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was a formless void, and the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And so begins the first creation story in the book of Genesis. You know the story, I'm not going to tell it. Now, the second story today is the story when my very young son, young, lower middle age, uh, lower elementary school age, helped us plant a garden and he got to choose what he wanted in his section of the garden and he chose to plant carrots and the very next day we um, we got okay and I got someone coming So the farmer behind me wanted to find out uh, what was happening with me shooting a picture in his field. <laughs> I got a poem to bless farmers. The story that I have that is my second story is about when, when my son Andrew was very young, elementary age. We planted a garden and he got to plant carrots. And the very next day as we arrived and he got out of the car, he says, oh, wait. I got to go get some of my carrots. Ah, uh, yes. Now he, uh, he knows a whole lot more about farming. This uh, poem is from To Bless the Space Between Us, and it's for the farmer. Before the human mind could warm to itself, the hands of the farmer had first to work, creating clearances in the earth's thicket cut into the thorn screens of wild briar, uproot the clusters of shrub bush, and dig out loose rock until a field emerged, whose clay could be loosened and softened to take seed and bring forth crops. The earth was able to trust the intention of the father's, farmer's hands, opening it, softening it, molding it, into a dominion of shelter and nourishment. It waits to its secluded winter for his imagination of springtime to feed into its darkened heart. New seeds for it to work its mind on until the harvest gathers and thickens with golden corn, honey-scented hay, ripe red and dark purple fruit. In his mind, the fields become presences. The feel of their covers, the feel of their colors, the brace of their walls, having greened his thought and tempered his heart. His eyes can read the animal atmosphere and see through their silence to sense their minds. His skilled hands can guide calves and lambs to birth. Out among his animals, in rain, cold, and snow, talking to them in affectionate callings, something in him turned to their rhythm. In these times when geography becomes virtual and developers urbanize the earth, may the farmer continue to hold true ground, keeping the intimate knowing of the clay alive, nourishing us with the fruits of the earth, serving as custodian of that precious threshold where the rhythm of nature with its serene pulse and sublime patience restores our minds. Amen. So be it. So be it for me. So be it for us all. <laughs>